Okay, if you enjoyed this video, you could become a Patreon supporter for just $5 a month. You could join the Robert Green Book Club, where we break down all of his videos in this type of format. So click on the description down below, and there you can get all of the archives of all of the Robert Green videos I've made. The goal is to go through all of his books. So yeah, click on the, click on the description down below, join $5 a month, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. All right, so strategies for developing a high sense of purpose. The first one is this, right? To, the, before anything, the key to all of the strategies that I'm going to be teaching you guys is to understand that learning requires a process, right? That process requires patience and hard work. In the world that we live in today, we live in a world where quick things are rewarded, where we want the quick rewards, where we are consistently cloud chasing. That is a bad. That develops a bad habit of not de of not having that patience, of not finding that masochistic pleasure in enduring pain when it comes to mastering any skill. Right. The key to making this work is to increase your level of desire for mastery, to increase your level of desire to having a sense of purpose. That's why you see a lot of people following movements that they don't really deeply believe on believe in, but that they're just bored. Right. When you don't have a high sense of purpose, you become more susceptible to manipulations, to cults, to false purposes. Right. Which we're going to be talking about next week. Right. So you must realize that you have to distrust anybody that promotes a shortcut. Distrust them. Do not trust anybody that advocates for shortcuts to mastery, for shortcuts in anything. Don't trust them. Even when I tell you how to make a guy fall in love with you in 24 hours, don't trust me. That's just clickbait. <laughs> did I just say that? I did not just say that, people. Trust me. Don't. <laughs> right? Oh, Lord. I just, you know, put my, I just uh, kick myself in the ass, right? But this is what I'm trying to tell you, man. Ain't, no, there's no such thing as a shortcut. That's how charlatans get people, right? Or anything that's fast and easy, anything that says how to build muscles quicker, how to get that guy quicker, how to be happy instantly, it'll never work out. It just never works out. You must be able to endure the dull and repetitive nature that work is that that, that is that is inherent in anything that is great, right? For example, right? I'm getting ahead of myself, but let's just talk about new sir Isaac, um let's just talk about sir isaac newton right newton lived in the era where the where there was a plague right newton obviously he was a very he was the one who talked about who I, i'm not too aware of that just read his story but he, he he discovered a lot of laws of physics he discovered about um about gravity and all that stuff but you want to know was you want to know when he discovered it when there was a plague and he was forced to go into the uh, into into the the fucking the village and shit, right? In those twenty months, that's when he he was bored. He was doing nothing, but he never felt the twenty months. He never felt the boredom, right? Why? Because he in the, in in silence, in quiet, in solitude, embraced that solitude and just learned to find engagement in his mind, right? It for, in those twenty months was it was it, those twenty months were where it's said to be one of the most creative 20 months in human history because he discovered a lot of laws of physics, right? But I'm getting ahead of myself, to be honest with you. I'm sounding like I don't know what I'm talking about. So let me, let's just go with the notes that, I'm, that I wrote, right? <laughs> to deal with this, you must feel yourself. You must feel yourself with a deep sense of purpose that will prepare you towards your inevitable destination. And these are the things that you must do. One, discover your calling in life, right? Begin by looking for signs of your primal inclination in your earliest years. What, you, what you're looking for is moments where you are unusually fascinated by subject, events, or activities or forms of play. Anything. It could be that maybe you were, you were a very competitive kid. It could be that maybe you were the kind of kid that loved to organize games with your friends. It could be that you were the type of kid that loved talking. It could be that as a child... You wanted to be on stage and talking in front of people like I was when I was a little beautiful child, right? It could be that when you were a child, you loved drawing because you couldn't focus in school like I was, right? Yeah, I think pe people are saying Mechi Sunshine. Yeah, it, it, that's actually in, the, in, in his chapter, Mastery in the 50th Law. You're right. 
Okay. So any, anything that fascinated your attention, bring yourself back to those moments as a child, right? In that, there is an imprint, a clue to what makes you unique as an individual. Or sometimes these moments could come to you as you're older, as Martin Luther King, right? When he was called to the Montgomery um, protests, right? It could be for me too. It came to me when I was 27, right? To draw, to do art. It came to me much later. I mean, it comes to a lot of people, like anything that deeply fascinates you, that, that, that any, anything, anything that captures your attention, right? As a child or even as an adult, you want to follow that. Don't, don't just let it be. Follow that. Almost like signpost. All right. Or it could be that you are fascinated uh, when you observe a master in their craft. Right. All of those things are inklings. Are 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 signs of of your uniqueness. Other signs could be moments when you're doing things that just comes particularly easier for you and natural compared to most people. For me, it's talking. For other people, it's weightlifting. Some people just build muscle faster than other people. You see, for other people, it's fighting. Some people are just naturally better fighters, like Yusuke Urameshi in the show Yu Yu Hakusho. Right. Like Mike Tyson, he was just naturally bulky. That motherfucker came out the womb with with, with fucking biceps and shit. Right. Right. And it says such pu public speaking for me or doing things that or another thing, it could be like doing things that nothing could discourage you. For example, you could do something like, for example, when you if you're a little kid and you love playing with Barbie dolls and people are like, yo, that's gay. And you're like, I don't give a fuck that I play with Barbie dolls. It could be that. Anything that no matter the criticism, you still do it. You see, it could be something that everybody says don't do it. For some reason, you still want to do it. Those are little things that, 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 that are pre-verbal, that came to you before you were even aware of your own identity. You want to follow those things because they came true from yourself, from the strata of your psyche, from the deep wells of your soul. You want to be able to be aware of those things because they they, 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 they point towards your calling in life, right? Again, people, if you guys want to support this, this is going to be with notes and everything on Patreon, right? So follow me there. You're going to get the high definition there, right? Um, yeah, let's keep going, right? Okay. Uh, right? It could be anything. For example, what are the parts of your personality that you consistently go against the grain of, of culture, Right? What are the things that you do that you know consciously you go against the grain, but you don't care? In my example, when I was a child, I was a Bible teacher. I would walk around school dressed up in a tie. I swear to God, I even have pictures of this. I would have all be dressed up. You know, if you guys go to my Facebook, go to the first photo on Facebook, and you know what I'm talking about. I'm dressed up in a tie, right? Like I'm praising God. I walked around with a Bible. Anything that you did that went against the normals, the norms of society, clearly came from just clearly came from the depthness of your soul it just did you want to pay attention to that what were the things that you didn't give a fuck that people knew you like right did you like booty sex as a guy who cares did you like training dick as a kid who cares nah, i'm kidding with you Nah, i'm kidding but it could it could be that it could be that you were into freaky shit become a porn director if you like freaky shit you see what i'm saying like don't 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 do that okay but if you are you know, don't blame me. Don't tell people you. I helped you find that. Okay, I don't want to. You know, um, yeah, all right, people. Let's keep going, right? You also want to know the particular intelligence that your brain is wired for, right? You can read books. It's called Frames of Mind. You can read that book. Talks about how to find your particular intelligence, right? By doing this, for example, with Einstein, he he realized that his form of intelligence was more imaginary. An example is 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 Leonardo da Vinci. He was not good at math in terms of equation, but he was good with geometry because he was an artist. And so he was able to do his mathematical equations through pictures, right? So it's kind of like Leonardo da Vinci, no, he wasn't good at algebra. He wasn't good at the geometry. He wasn't good at learning languages. He tried to learn Greek. He wasn't good at it. So the way he learned was his own way. Me, for example, me, I don't read that much. You guys might think I read that much. What I do is the way I learn is I read a book, right? I read a book for like five minutes and put it down. I read a book for five minutes and just put it down because I can't focus too much and I'll just think. I'll just think, right? 
And then two hours later, I read another part of that book, blah, 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 put it down and just think, right? That's how I learn. I can't be one of these autistic people who could just read for hours. Seriously, right? That's not me. I wish it was, right? That's why I wasn't good in school. I have my own way of learning. I read or I feel a need, read upon that need, try to fix that problem. And to try to fix that problem, it becomes ingrained in my mind. Find what is your form of intelligence. Some people are stupid when it comes to books, but are amazing when it comes to sport. Don't let people denigrate what they call intelligence. There's different forms of intelligence. It could be mathematical intelligence. It could be social intelligence. It could be, um, for example, some people who are great manipulators are great in terms of social intelligence. It could be that you are a great athlete. It could be that you have a great feel for animals. You, you know those animal lovers who love animals more than people, right? Those people may have a higher sense for 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 the the um, for for the, the you know they, they're able to relate to animals more than humans, right? That's why we have animal walkers, animal trainers. They're able to think inside animals. And no normal person can do that. It has to be part of your calling, right? That's what you want to do. You want to find where where is your natural intelligence greatest at? Me, again, I was not good at math. I was not good at normal things. What was I good at? I was good at ideas. Like, like for example, I'm re- real with you guys. Like, when I was at work, when I was a social worker, right? I'm going to keep it real. When I was a social worker, like, I was horrible at my job. But what I was good at was when it was time to talk about ideas, I was pretty good at it. Like, I, w- I remember, like, I-, I wish I recorded those things. But I remember when just me, people were like, oh, wow, interesting. When I was in class in college, the only reason why I studied was because I wanted to participate in class, right? So I would read a lot. Not a lot, to be honest with you. I cheated, right? But I would read simply because I wanted to participate, right? That's what motivated me to learn, right? So it's kind of, you got to find where are you naturally motivated? Where where do you naturally um, excel in? Um, um, where do you naturally find more? Where does your mind naturally just become more, like, excited? You know, you, you want to just pay attention to that. That's all. Just pay motherfucking attention to that. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, become a Patreon supporter to join the Robert Green Book Club. Um, right now, we're at a meditation retreat, so I'm going to be uploading more Robert Green Book Club videos when I come back. But do join the Patreon so that you can watch the previous book club videos and so that you guys can get alerted of the other videos. So it's only $5 a month. You get the book club videos and other videos that I post there that I don't post on YouTube. Take care.